This is the award-winning Lee Pitts Live. Brought to you by the North Law Firm. For car accidents and negligent security cases, call Joe at 239-337-1191. By Southwest Florida Crime Stoppers, where you can report crimes and get paid with nobody knowing your identity. Call 1-800-780-TIPS. By Solomon's Air Conditioning Incorporated. No matter what the weather condition is outside, have it your way inside. 239-693-1569. And by Lee Health. Southwest Florida, welcome to another edition of Lee Pitts Live here on Fox 4. We're so thrilled to come to you from the outstanding, fabulous Dunbar Community School that's done an outstanding job in hosting us for uh, the next uh, four weeks. And we have some great programming scheduled for you. In this particular show, get a chance to have a conversation with the president of Florida Gulf Coast University, Dr. Mike Martin. Talk to the superintendent of the Lee County School District, Dr. Greg Atkins, and we'll get a chance to talk to James Millwall Kill, the, super, the uh, president of the Lee County NAACP. Later on in the show, we'll talk to some other representatives from the Lee County School District. All that's happening on Lee Pitts Live. We'll be right back. Students at Dunbar High's STEM and College Preparatory Academy are unlocking their future. Programs offered are designed for exploration in new technologies like robotics, 3D animation, game design, forensic and biomedical sciences, and engineering. Dunbar High School has been an A high school for two consecutive years and is the only Microsoft certified high school in the world. Take the first steps in securing your child's future and contact us today and see for yourself what Dunbar High School has to offer. Servicing Southwest Florida for over 30 years, Solomon's Air Conditioning Incorporated is your leading family-owned and operated air conditioned company. There's no job too big or too small. Solomon's Air Conditioning Incorporated is here for you. We have maintenance contracts and financing. For additional information, visit our website, follow us on social media, or call the office at 239-693-1569. Remember, no matter what the weather is on the outside, have it your way on the inside. Solomon's Air Conditioning Incorporated. Service you can count on. Hi, I'm Dr. Simone Mitchell, principal of the historic Dunbar Community School. Our doors are open to students ages 16 and older who would like to earn a GED diploma or improve communication skills through our English as a Second Language program. Dunbar Community School also offers career assistance upon graduation. For a better future, enroll today and let our experienced Falcon and staff help you reach your goals. For additional information or to tour our campus, you may visit our website, find us on social media, or call the school at 239-334-2941 and together we will cultivate a mindset for success. All right, Southwest Florida, welcome back to Lee Pitts Live. Again, we're here at the historic Dunbar Community School. What a great setting to bring the television show. Looking forward to the conversation here now with the uh, president of Florida Gulf Coast University, the superintendent of Lee County School District, the president of the Lee County branch of the NAACP. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank welcome. you. Glad to be here. It's good to get all of you here. Fortunately for me, I've interviewed you all over, over a period of time, and I've always I've seen all of you doing your level best to do your best in the community. So uh, it's good to get you here at one time as we move in deep into uh, the first quarter of 2020. One of the things that has been, I guess, in a lot of conversation is the the opportunities that you guys at your big institutions have been able to provide for uh, minorities to participate in various forms of doing business with the uh, with your schools, uh, certainly in the area of development, construction, and things of that nature. So let's let's begin with uh, you, brother James Milwaukee. Hill. Talk about your relationship and the partnership that you've been uh, that these uh, institutions and NAACP and uh, minority 
developers have been uh, having there? Well, we don't have one yet. <clears throat> we're, we're on the road with that. Uh, we reached out to each other, Dr. Atkins and myself, and AACP, as well as his President Martin. Uh, we don't have any disagreements. We all are in agreement that procurement opportunities should be inclusive for all. And so we wanted this meeting to take place to raise the visibility of these great institutions and what they are working towards regarding equal opportunity for all people, definitely African Americans. Uh, we find that owners are using the term minority to satisfy any minority uh, percentage requirements, but oftentimes minority is excluding blacks. And so our position here would be today is not necessarily minorities on the job, because we do see them. What we don't see is qualified African Americans, and both these gentlemen are working toward uh, at least addressing some of that. Okay, so go ahead. How do you how do you how are you guys looking at procurement uh, opportunities, construction? That would be physical schools being built and things of that nature. Right? Physical schools being built. It could be a project like a smaller project like HVAC. Mm -hmm. It could be putting in flooring in mm -hmm. replacement. Um, working in maintenance of our schools, re-roofing project. That's just one aspect. Food services. Food services. Right. Um, you're also talking about any number of things like printing services. Okay. You, know, you can out contract that out. It's any type of, of contract where we are asking for a business uh, owner or a company to come in and do a service uh, for our school district. Okay. Let's let's go to you, Dr. Mark. The at Florida Gulf Coast University. I mean, the pillar in the community, the shining institution on the hill. Um, you have brought a certain level of sensitivity to equal opportunity. I've had conversations with you about that. Um, what, what, is, what, are, what are ways that minorities can do business uh, with Florida Gulf Coast University that you see right now on the horizon? Well, much like Greg said, uh, certainly construction projects and either being contractors or subs. Uh, and various other projects that relate to that. But also, as, as Greg suggested, we outsource our food service. We can certainly look at, we will certainly look at more opportunities for minority businesses to supply us there. Uh, we've got a number of enterprises across the campus that we don't manage directly, but through them, we can become significantly bigger utilizers of minority businesses in the area. And then I think also we need to continually find ways for members of the minority community to work directly for FGCU. And I think that's also a matter of uh, seeking out people who can appropriately meet the needs of the institution and therefore have a career on campus. And in every one of those ways, uh, we, we need to be proactive and we need to do it in partnership with the NAACP. As James knows, I'm about a 30-year member of the NAACP and several other communities and have worked and throughout my career to try to find ways to build those partnerships. And I think we, it's, it's an ongoing process, but it's a process worth pursuing. Let's go back to the definition of minority. You heard uh, the president of the NAACP said that, say that, you know, and I've, I'm learned enough to know that females qualify as minorities and so on and so forth. Um, and a lot of white females companies do qualify as minorities. The black piece, the African-American piece, is that some kind of way you can track that by working with community-based groups and make sure you get a fair participation? Well, I think there's absolutely ways we can track it. And, and, and I, want, I want everyone we work with to reflect the nature of this community. I think it's important we think about that. As you probably know, we've just struck a partnership with the Quality of Life Center to have a presence up in this neighborhood and to do some things jointly to know what's going on so we can be a better servant to the neighborhood as well, to bring the university here rather than expect people to go to the university. So all of those are opportunities for us to reach out, better understand what's available to the institution in the African community, American community in this particular case, and be more proactive in creating opportunities. Now, uh, I'll come back to you in a minute, Jane. When we're sitting here, uh, Dr. Atkins, um, we are talking to the TV show that is going into about 750,000 households and surrounding six counties. I know we're talking to the president of the uh, Lee County branch of the NAACP. 
But when you when you start to track your information of minorities uh, throughout the region, you are able to include them in your numbers. Do you like? Do we, the Lee County School District, do you have a certain goal that you would like to reach in terms of African Americans being able to do a certain amount of business with this, the school district? We don't have a goal when it when it comes to a. Uh, an actual number or percentage that's something that we really can't not do and, and as I understand unless we do a disparity study mm -hmm. uh, and go through that process what we're doing right now is we're working on I think our outreach efforts uh, so we could reach local businesses minorities small businesses and because sometimes they don't realize the opportunity that is there with the school district because there's I mean we're 1.6 billion dollar business there's a lot of opportunity for a small or minority business owner to do work with the district, and they may not know that it, that's there. So we just recently, we had a vendor fair. We invited uh, hundreds of people to it. Uh, that's an awareness piece. It also is about helping them work through the process of procurement so they know where to look, how to go through that process, and understand what's available. Uh, we, um, we are also working on a small and minority business program to bring to the district, our procurement uh, director uh, Frederick Ross and our uh, staff attorney Brian Williams. Brian has had experience in Miami-Dade uh, working in economic, the Economic Development Office doing this type of work. So we're going to use that experience here to, I think, expand what we can do here for our community. All right, before I come to you, James, you said $1.6 billion? Yes, sir. Wow, that's a big number. Did you have a number? Yeah, we're about a $600 million operation, okay. so we're not nearly as big as the school I was thinking district. when I go through that campus, it's yeah. so big, but yeah. it's not as big as that. Okay. Well, this is, this is an expensive <laughs> operation that uh, Greg handles, so. Well, well, let me say this on air. I never said this on air. I have found a use. I'm a minority business. Uh, most people don't realize that. And I have had a really found it a user friendly to do business with the Lee County School District. Uh, so I, I want to make sure I say that on air. Now, let's go to you, James. The process. Is there a lot of paperwork? Have, have you guys gotten together on what's the process to, to get tapped in? Do you have some businesses now that are waiting to do business with the school district or this uh, Florida Gulf Coast and they've been getting pushed back? Tell us where we are right now. Well, <clears throat> Beginning, beginning, uh, and that's 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 the truth. That okay. that we're beginning. Uh, we have not had this type of breakthrough with FTCU and the Lee County School District uh, prior to both Dr. Atkins and Dr. Martin arriving, and so we all know well well each other stand. It's not so much as the owners, because these are considered the owners. It's the contract management company that are winning these contracts. Okay. Okay, so let's say, let's say, let's say ABC contract company a gets a big contract with the Lee County School District to build a new school. Then the pressure needs to come from the Lee County School District to make sure that they make an effort to have African Americans as a part of that business model? Well, African American, well, I don't want to, they have the attorney there. And, and so I know that historically, um, certain cases have been struck down uh, if, if it's not worded carefully. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, institutions, public projects can do regarding getting minority contractors on the job. Now, uh, we're seeing minorities again, but what we're not seeing is African Americans. It's not so much uh, of the process, the uh, procedure, the paperwork. Um, if if African Americans are contractors and they have license, then they also have um, they also know that they're responsible for completing all paperwork. That's not the issue. The issue is, is what we've seen here locally with the John Walker project, and that's a three to five million dollar project, considerably smaller than what FGCU and the school superintendent, school superintendent uh, do. <clears throat> so what happened was that there was subcontractors, okay, so the general contractor was chosen. The city did not give him any, give them any conditions. Uh, there was a minority of uh, 
program in place for the city of Fort Myers with a percentage of 10 to 15 percent minorities. However, this was not communicated to that particular contract management company that got that job. When we looked up African American contractors, I'm talking about, right in our backyard, we see this multi million dollar project taking place, but we see no uh, contractors that resemble the community in which is uh, the work is going on. Unemployment rate census would show is higher in this area than in any other area. It also shows that this area has the poorest uh, uh, track, okay, uh, group of people in different places in part. So poverty exists here locally, and unemployment is higher here in the African American community, more so than in the other community. We don't have no problem with minorities being used. Okay. Let's just no put, opportunity. All right, so that's a uh, that's another project that we'll get to Jones Walker, right? I've, mm -hmm. I've read about that. Let's go to the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, uh, tickler system, uh, what you may have in place when you're talking to people who are coming in to bid on projects and receiving mm -hmm. these large projects. And, and they qualify. They got the bonding capability. They got all these things in place to allow them to win these big construction projects. Um, what is, how, how does Florida Gulf Coast have that conversation with those developers? Well, in every case that I've been involved in, we've encouraged them, and there's a limit what you can require. Mm -hmm. We've encouraged them to seek minority subs for sure. And we've just done several projects on campus in which I think had you observed them, you would know that we're having a little bit of success. And we will start one of the biggest construction projects in the history of the institution probably this summer. 117,000 square foot building. And I've had very direct conversations with the people who are likely to build that building to make that clear. I think we can do some things together that we need to work harder on. Let's go to you, Dr. Um, Atkins. The um, challenges. What type of challenges do you have? And is the Lee County School, the Lee County School District committed to doing their level best to make sure that uh, all minorities get a chance to participate in the growth, the economic development, and job opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is something that continues to be a, a, a challenge, but it's also a commitment on the part of the school district to do. I, I think it benefits our entire community. I mean, it, it serves all of us to serve our community better, make sure that, that these contracts are coming to, to local businesses, to small businesses, mm -hmm. so they can grow and be a vital part of our community. I mean, I plan to live here the rest of my life, and I've been here now, you know, 30 plus years. Um, and, and so I'm certainly somebody who's interested in Lee County being, you know, a, a wonderful, huge economic success moving forward. You know, this is how uh, my, kid, my kid is, and hopefully grandkids someday. And uh, uh, I think we all have to, the challenge is all of us continuing to work together and communicate together to make sure that we make this a reality here in the school district and in our Lee County community. Okay, we'll continue to talk about this and keep the community informed. And I'm so thrilled that you guys came out to uh, be good sports and just kind of start the process of the dialogue. I'm looking forward to talking to the experts when we go to commercial break. We'll be right back. Nothing fits like custom-made clothing. Fort Myers-based designer Georgia Fullerton has been designing and fitting men's, women's, and children's clothes for over 15 years. Her motto, you name it, we sew it. You'll get New York and Miami type designs and materials without the high prices. Simply send a photo or explain what you want. She'll take it from there. Drop by the store or make an appointment for a free estimate. When you think about your casual, formal, or Sunday's best attire, think Georgia Designs. Call Georgia today, 239-244-6501. Congratulations to Lee Pitts Live, recipient of the NAACP Image Award. Hey, Southwest Florida, welcome back. Like I said early on, we're going to get a chance to talk to the experts. <laughs> I like calling people experts. I'm so thrilled to get some experts in here. We have Brian Williams, the chief legal counsel for the Lee County School District. He's an attorney. And we'll also get a chance to talk to Frederick Ross, the director of procurement and services for the Lee County School District. Gentlemen, welcome in. I'm going to have you pick up your cup and just bump me. 
and just put them right down there on the yellow part. There you go. You're good. Welcome to Lee Piss Live. Thank you. I'm sure this won't be your last time here. Now, people are shocked already. They see you on screen. They shock. They physically, when they see you, they get shocked. Now that they've gotten over the shock, I want people to know that you guys are in these positions that you're in in life because of your brain, your intellect, and you happen to be African Americans, which is a beautiful thing and a good thing. I don't really like saying happen to be. Actually, I don't even like saying happen to be. It's just your human being. But anyway, I made my point. Now, counsel, there are people out there who actually monitor this, who watch this to make sure it's done right. And there are different companies out there, too, who have people who are watching it because they may lose out in an opportunity and they want they have a vengeance. Hey, we should have gotten it. So we can't go into all of that. But as a as a uh, as an attorney, what are some key uh, bullet points that are, are just pretty standard when you are looking at whether you're being fair or not? Well, one of the things that you need to look at when determining whether you're being fair is identifying the actual uh, availability of firms. So, you know, when you're looking at a county such as Lee County, how many firms out there are actually minor minority owned that are available and have the capacity to do business with an agency? Mm -hmm. um, whether those uh, businesses are actually in compliance with, as Mr. Frederick, uh, Mr. Ross mentioned, the uh, state laws, but also uh, procurement policies as it relates to the agency. So you have, for example, to do construction, you need to be pre-qualified as a vendor, uh, which means you have to have a certain bonding capacity. Mm -hmm. Construction projects for school sites use bonds. Um, you have to qualify for those bonds. So you have to have a certain amount of economic uh, resources available to you to, mm -hmm. to, to be able to do those. And, and again, a lot of people don't realize how many different uh, hurdles there are to do business with a government agency. Then you have Jessica Lunsford, uh, which is a act that requires a background check. Now, when you start background checking employees of companies as well as workforce, again, another thing, a step in the process to doing business with, with a public agency such as a school district. So, um, you know, and then it's there, the other bullet point that I want to mention is just knowledge of the actual opportunity. Mm -hmm. How are those getting out? Are we doing um, outreach events where we're promoting those? A lot of people don't realize that uh, contractors, those big, large general contractors, don't publicize all of their projects. They publicize them to those firms that are actually pre-qualified with them. So not only do you have to be pre-qualified with the school district, registered as a vendor with the school district, you also have to actually be pre-qualified with that contractor to get a notice of those uh, opportunities. Right. And they have certain people that they've been working with over the years, less labor intensive. They already got a working relationship and they can just move along smoothly. And then they have to interrupt what they're doing to uh, to make this effort, gallant effort to get other people involved if they're not getting them involved. I want to see if I can recall from my uh, my banking days as a corporate lender, Davis Bacon, wage requirements. Go ahead and break that down. They got to meet those wage requirements. See, no, no, I'm dropping some knowledge there on you your go. counselor. That, that's impressive. <laughs> um, the uh, and that's federal law. And Davis Bacon, you're correct, is is fair wages. And a lot of counties have fair wage labor laws as it relates to doing business with a county or municipal organization. Uh, most of the time, you will not necessarily see that with a school district project unless it's federal funds involved. And then they do have to comply. That is required to be monitored. Um, uh, Companies are required to submit uh, logs of the actual employees and the labor so that, that can be checked against the wages. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so uh, things like that are, are excellent in terms of monitoring and compliance on projects. However, with your, your state funds, you don't see the same level of compliance unless the agency puts that in place. And there's ways to do that. Okay, now let's go to you in procurement. The Just from this small conversation, and we'll have more later, you really have to have your ducks in a row. OK, now there are some as it relates to minorities or African-Americans who may be in the early stages, who don't have the accounting systems in place and all these types of things. Are there systems within your operation where you work with people to get them to be able to reach those benchmarks to do business with the school district? Yes, definitely. Um, <clears throat> so first, we you know bring them in and, and you know try to get an understanding of of their the goods and services they provide and, okay. and where they're capable uh, to provide those for the district. And if there are those gaps, and um, 
you know, we work with the different agencies. Uh, one agency we partner with is the Florida Gulf Coast Small Business Development Center. So we can refer them to them to um, get additional assistance in, in those type of counting type areas and, and other functions. But if it's really uh, specifically in terms of how to do business with the district, that's where we can kind of provide the most assistance. Uh, those are the processes we know, and we can kind of reach out and help those vendors with, hey, here's how to submit um, for the district. Here's where to um, find the bids and find the contracts that are, are currently advertised. Um, you know, here's the insurance requirements and the bonding uh, capabilities that are required, and, and here's uh, maybe a route to, to, to uh, reach that, uh, meet that requirement. So yes, there are some some things that you know we we can't you know assist with in just their major functioning of their business. But when it comes to doing business with the district, yes, there's definitely some areas we can assist in. Final question for both of you: uh, Do you bring to your job a certain sensitivity because of your race to historic roadblocks that have been put in place over long periods of time, including Jim Crow? and discrimination and racism that has existed throughout society that may have impeded the opportunities for minorities to be in the loop. Yes, most certainly. As a um, product of a family that um, had, had a black owned business, um, a product of a HBCU, Howard University, yes, I'm definitely sensitive to, to um, what's going on in our community and, and how um, our history and our past has, mm -hmm. has affected uh, where we are spe specifically in terms of procurement and, and, and vendors uh, being awarded government um, uh, jobs. Um, with that, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm that seat at the table to, to help speak up and to help push these initiatives and push these priorities uh, with the hopes of seeing more awarded and, and seeing a, a change. I'm going to stay with you on that. And okay. the same question still coming to you. You at that table, yes, sir. our superintendent, our school board, Lee County, you see a high level of consciousness in terms of getting things done? Oh, yes. Yes, we do. It's um, being discussed? Yes, it's being behind discussed. Closed doors. Behind closed you doors. You're bringing that out in the public right now? Bringing it out in the public right now. We have <laughs> initiatives and, and priorities ready to go. All right. Yes, sir. All right. We, 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 we thanks for bringing that out in the open. Mm -hmm. Same question. Uh, Counselor? Simple, question, simple answer to that is yes. Okay. Um, I think, um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of experiences in my career. Um, the last school district I worked for is a, a little bit bigger, Miami-Dade County. And in that role, I had, I was an attorney for the school district for three years. Mm -hmm. And then I ran the economic development department for the school district for three, three and a half years. And I was put in to that position by the superintendent there um, when we passed a $1.2 billion bond. We were doing all construction on all of our schools mm -hmm. and the superintendent made that commitment to the community that we were gonna have uh, the business stay within the community. And so, uh, I was the attorney that actually drafted the small business policy for the school district. And as a result, it created what's called the Office of Economic Opportunity. And I was nudged into uh, applying for that position and ultimately got it and, and ran that program for three and a half years. So Beautiful. We, we created a program from scratch, mm -hmm. I'll say, and I believe now they've got a, close to a thousand businesses in that program. But when you say Miami Day, I know right then that you had to be that the, 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 the powers that be over there, the, the community based organizations, everybody else is going to make sure they're going to be sh screaming from the rafters. And I'm glad we got people like both of you over here. Of course, I'll be having some conversations with you off the air. We'll sit around and we'll drink some orange juice. Let me bump you out. <laughs> no alcohol, people, no drugs, drug free. But those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like these fine gentlemen who are doing it. We'll see you. Lee Pitts Live is a Lee Pitts Enterprise production.